Okay. So I need to get used to this stuff. I think we are back up and running. Um, I had some sound issues which um, made my computer shut down. So let's just uh, test this out and see if I need to shut down some background stuff. Um, anyway, now it seems like we are resumed. So we also seem to have a chat running. And you can see my screen. Um, so I've been talking about some new designs uh, lately and it's all just thoughts. What's going through my mind about maybe designing a new printer. And um, I talked about something called the XT. Um, which I want to be mostly, um, or I want the parts to be at least my um, the the majority uh, pieces which runs inside the printer. I want them to be able to be CNC milled or cut, preferably cut. And that will take some time. Uh, I, I'm not sure which route to go. Um, I was thinking about something enclosed. That's why I want parts to be uh, aluminum or something. So, but that's kind of far away up in the air, and um, it's gonna be a Core X Y. Uh, not the biggest, maybe 300 by 300 build volume something around there um i don't want uh, i think the weaking is as big as i need uh, about 400 uh, on the y and the 350 on the x uh, seems to do it most of the time you know if you need bigger we usually don't print much bigger than 20 by 20 do we really i mean come on guys uh, yeah whatever Thanks, uh, Demons. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, nice to hear someone listening. That's great. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna have a look at what I'm doing, what I'm working on uh, these days. Because uh, what led to. I had some teaser. Some teaser uh, screenshots on uh, the Weeking Builders Club of the the Wee Baby and <laughs> yeah I can talk a little about the Wee Baby first yeah the cow is uh, hard to uh, to figure it takes time to figure out you know first time I cuddled was <laughs> was 20 years ago so I guess it's uh, just in my hands it's sort of like craftsmanship as well and what you can see on the screen now it's so, something I'm just uh, threw together this is just throwing stuff together this is concept uh, and I'm printing out stuff and uh, putting parts together see how things uh, you know work and whatnot and um, the the idea by behind this design and this printer or whatever it is is that i i wanted to i wanted another i wanted some a test machine a test um, rig of some sort and i was just planning to make you know some plate for the to play to place the boards on and the motors on and the hot end and so some fans and and whatnot and and then I was like, well, let's mount some rails to this thing, you know, let's have some rails, let's have some movements going also. And, uh, well, 
then I was like, well, let's just design some small, cheapish uh, printer, which is going to be Core XY, like the cheapest possible Core XY, limited uh, amount of hardware and uh, many printed parts. So that's what I'm doing. This is basically evolution of a test, uh, uh, test rig or what do you call it so it's of course not finished there's gonna be something in front here as well um, yeah the frame yeah <laughs> of course we have the V we have the V there but yeah I've been thinking about this for a while using um, I th there might be two uh, lifting points for the C. I'm gonna go with a belted C here as well. And I'm gonna use the um, the Bring Smart Worm Gear, which I talked uh, have been talking about, which I did um, just uh, unboxing of the Bring Smart Worm Gear. I'm uh, thought testing that one inside this machine, and I'm uh, probably gonna try to run the belt through the gear and over to both sides. So I'm gonna have one rail in the front or whatever you call front or back on these machines is not uh, important. But uh, one slider, one um, C carrier at the front and I'm gonna have two at the back. So we are going to have three uh, C carriers but probably two lifting points or maybe just one lifting point because this is not a very big machine what you see now is 300 uh, the, the extrusions i have here the red parts are 300 long so we will probably have some above uh, 200 in build volume on this machine 200 to 250 maybe something like that and um, I can try to show more of this uh, more of this machine uh, as I go uh, the plan is to finish this in uh, two weeks or something uh, I'm not sure <laughs> how that's gonna go <laughs> like the weeking took about a year you know but um, yeah so probably the first prototype is not going to be very good anyway. Um, I have already printed out the, the bottom uh, part, which is not rigid enough. And also need, we need a base on this machine. We need somewhere to put the electronics. So I'm not sure what to do with that at this point. Uh, you have any ideas, let me know. And I'm just going to bring you the frame. So, I don't know if you can see this. So this is the, this is what I printed so far. I can bring up my, um, my screen a little bit so you can see bigger. So here is, it's not a big thing, uh, that's the whole point. It's supposed to be small, smallish, but with a decent uh, build volume. And um, yeah, we need a more rigid bottom, of course. We can do that. But in this early concept stage, I want to just print out things quickly. Because most of the parts get thrown away i'm sorry uh, 90 to 95 percent of the parts i'm printing at this stage in the development process are thrown away and if you can see i also printed actually some wee slots um which can be used uh, some of the some of them warped a little bit so uh that's only on the ends which are, are not used so that's not important for this prototype and I did run some 
some carriers on them to check and they work fine. Dimensions are good. They are printed on the weekend, of course. And um, we also have the weekend running in the background. I can bring up the weekend as well. Let's see. Okay, so that's not gonna work. Yeah, let me not use time on that now then. And um, this is not gonna be a long live uh, whatever. Um, I see it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm prototyping, you know. The, the Wiking is uh, spitting out prototypes uh, like all the time. Um, so, and you can actually have, I did pro, I did uh, design some carriers. The Wiking, yeah, yeah, the Wiking. And uh, let me see if I, here we have some motors coming on. So I'm going to bring down my screen again. So you can see more of the fusion screen. And here's one motor attached. So this is the plan to have the motor like this. And we are going to go with the rail core version of the Core XY. I don't know if you have seen the rail core, but they run the belts differently than on what we do on the Wiking. Uh, three point leveling. Yeah, I don't know about that, but. Um, this is just gonna be a cheapest small machine, so I don't think we need that for this one, but yeah. Might be, we could test it. Anyway, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add another motor now. So I'm just gonna copy this one and uh, paste it in like that. So you can see how I work. And I'm gonna place it where it should be. So I'm gonna join it and just pick the the edge here and I'm gonna pick the edge here so that will be placed and I have not designed any um, well it's not different in that sort um, well it's a core XY but just run the belts a little bit differently which is kind of nice I think the rail core is very, seems like a very good machine and uh, also i need to attach this guy this is not attached at the moment so let me do that i'm just gonna grab some part of the gray i'm gonna pick one of the points here i'm gonna add that to one of the points on the red one this one so that's fixated like that so nothing moves away and also um, what we can do we can bring in some uh, some carriers yeah top yeah it could be enclosed I don't know if this is gonna be a direct drive I want this this test machine to be um, um, have interchangeable um, hot ends so it's gonna be like a quick change uh, not like a tool changer but almost like manual tools changing so let me find some carriers I have some carriers where cheapest carriers I designed in like 10 minutes so they are not working but uh, there's something just to get sort of um, get to know you know the build volume or so because these guys they steal space so let me add this guy and um yeah this is gonna be sliding on the y so i'm gonna do that by uh, let's see 
I'm gonna use this point and that's gonna be to this point just let me concentrate a little bit guys I think this is gonna be to 10.6 millimeter up then we want a little bit in front like that and it's gonna be a slider and we want to move it in uh, the y direction like that so yeah i'm too close so i need to rearrange this a little bit of course we are going to be 0.7 outside of the frame like this so this is sort of a carrier which we can place uh, some extrusions on and if we have a look at this how, how much build volume this would give we can see here in fusion 360 how much we would reach so uh, let me just see I think we could reach about um, at least 200 depends let me see so we will probably be something like this So that means we can move about, let me see, Let's see how the limits we have, probably can start there and go at least 200. So if we have 200 on the Y, I think that's okay. We probably should stop for about here somewhere and we can bring in another v slot for the x-axis let's just copy one of these guys so that's just control v control c i'm just going to turn it around like this i'm just going to leave it there and i'm going to use joints i'm just going to pick one of these points and i'm going to add it to this guy so I'm just gonna pick that point and that's gonna be a rigid joint not so yeah something like this and then we have an x-axis also which is exciting and we can bring in another Y carrier I guess just to have uh, it more uh, so it looks a little bit better and the way I do that I just join this guy to uh, let me see this guy something like that and we actually are going to go all point seven out side and we need to do that for the other one as well we need to take this minus 0.7 let me see in the chat yeah thanks Demons 1988 so I'm not aligned here why am I not aligned let me have a look this is not correctly placed it's gonna be this is not always so easy to do um, we're gonna go negative 4.3 I think no of course 3.7 negative 3.7 that's where we wanna be and then this one needs to be uh, 
needs to be 3.7 outside like that there we go so we have um, we have uh, Y carriers I'm just gonna have a look at the chat a minute Yeah, <laughs> Darius from Austria. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so I'm not gonna use too much time on these details now because it's live. But um, um, I don't know today or uh, tomorrow I'm gonna start on the front I might start on the front uh, while you are here uh, depends but anyway what I want to do now because I'm curious on how, how rigid this machine would be now with this printed back plate I mean we probably would like to have a Wii slot also on the back on this part uh, it would be more rigid, but I would like to just just try to leave as much of it printable as possible and leave the hardware to a minimal. So let me just print something and see. And I'm going to show you how I, I want to print this guy. I'm also going to start the print. So you can uh, see how I slice it and uh, you can see the weaking... Uh, and printing i just need to go into my web web um, camera so you can also see that kind of slow sorry about that so here is the wiking Yeah, I don't want rods, uh, <laughs> Dario, Darius, I don't want rods. No rods, no rods. Keep the rods away from me, please. No rods. I did not like rods. So, you saw, you saw the weaking ready. And what's also, what's important, I can bring up the control panel for, for the weaking. What you see I have going on on the weaking, you see I already have the weaking uh, at 60 degrees Celsius at the build plate. That's because my build plate is so thick and heavy, so it needs time to warm up. If I just start it like at room temperature and start printing, the top surface will never be at 60 or 70 or whatever you set it to. It takes like at least five minutes to get heated probably through so I just leave it on like 60 if I know I'm gonna print something in uh, the next hour or something I just leave it on at 60 <laughs> or 50 40 whatever um, so it's ready to start printing then I don't have to <laughs> to wait for that okay that's maybe not the safest idea don't try that at home by the way <laughs> okay so let's just slice this uh, back plate or what we should call this uh, part then. Um, yeah. No, no rods. So let me go to tools and make, and uh, we want to take this part. And I already have uh, saved it, but now you see how that works. So let's go to Cura. Let's open up Cura. And let's see how quickly we can uh, print this part because it's quite thick. It's a quite thick part. Uh, I'm curious on how quick we can print it. I'm going to try to slice it in a way that it prints quickly. Because we're probably going to throw it away. It's like the first concept model, and I need at least like 10 or something, I guess. At least three, I mean three. But uh, usually it ends up like 100 
so yeah so let's bring in the wee baby motor plate and um, I need of course to turn it around and we can print it this way uh, it's a little bit far out on the sides so I would prefer to print it like this I think that's a more uh, we have more space around the, the perimeter and um, yeah we have PLA loaded and I have a 0.5 nozzle so that's why I can print up to 0.4 uh, layer height that's like the maximum but of course if when you print higher thicker layers you need slower speed because of the volume coming out of the nozzle is very big and you need to heat all uh, all the material so uh, and the v6 the non-volcano the, the volcano can do more yeah but uh, the non-volcano the stock v6 cannot uh, do much more than like 15 cubic millimeter per second so you can actually you know figure out how fast you can go regarding to the layer height you have yeah it's on for hours <laughs> that is that's, that's cool uh, so but I'm going with 0.375 layers because that's add that adds up it this is a number that adds up in uh, the weekings um, step heights if, I, if we do some calculation we can actually figure out what kind of layer heights which is optimal for us so at the weekend we have um, 3200 steps per millimeter so if we do one divided by 3200 we get this number and let's say we multiply this with 100 and then we have that number which is a little bit low to print on and if we uh, multiply this by 10 we get 0, 0 0.3125 if we do 12 let's see let's multiply this by 12 we get 0 0.375 which you have me running now in Cura uh, first layer is going to be 0.3 you don't want that too big you want it thick but not too thick and then my line width the wall lines are going to be 0.5 uh, 0.5 nozzle as I said uh, we can squeeze you out more on the bottom lines and the infill I'm going 0.6 which is about 120% of the nozzle which is normal and I want three uh, walls I want three top layers, three bottom layers. Uh, I want optimized uh, wall printing order. I want thin walls activated, even though I don't, I don't have any thin walls, but it's uh, just on. So, and um, for it, infill, I just yeah, twenty percent. But I want connect infill lines. That's important for a stronger part, and also it might actually go quicker to print parts. So for uh, build plate temperature, I'm going to go 65 and I'm going to go the first at 75 and flow at 95, it should be okay. Um, and three millimeter refraction with pressure advanced enabled and 60 retract, 30 prime speed, 60 uh, print speed. I'm gonna go. I'm going 40 at the wall speeds, but uh, inner wall also just 60, 40 outer wall. Top bottom is gonna be. Um, I can go 60 on those. I don't see why not. And 40 on the first layer and travel at 150. And I want combing, not in skin. Uh, I want to avoid printed parts 
uh, I don't have any support. That's also important when I'm designing. I'm always trying to print it without support. So uh, let's see. Um, 80% fan, it's okay. The fan is pretty. I never run it at 100. It's in like two. <laughs> it's too. Uh, it pushes too much. So. I want the fan to be starting not at layer 2, but I want to be at full speed at layer 4. Um, no support needed for this part. Uh, I don't need any adhesion. So that should be it. All the settings. Let's slice it and see how... <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be 4 hours. That not, that's not too bad. We can have a look at how it uh, it is sliced. So let's go through the layers. Looks decent. I think we should just just hit play and see how it turns out. Uh, which fan I'm using? Yeah, uh, it's just uh, some blower. I some 20, 2015 blower. At 24 volts, I get that Digi key, I think, or RS components, probably, maybe. Um, yeah, it's a big part, so four hours, it's uh, it's nice, uh, I would say. So we can see that um, we already have the 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 bed set to 75, and it quickly will now reach 75 degrees and you will see the um, I don't remember what I said yeah I set the PLA at 220 I usually push the temperature for PLA quite high when I print so thick layers there's so much plastic coming out of the nozzle so we need some extra temperature to melt it quick enough and we are probably going to see some movements uh, soon. This is not HD. Let me get HD. Which is better. So guys, yeah. Any, um, any questions? Let me go to the chat and see if I missed something. Um, the wheels running off. I, yeah, we're gonna fix that. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, no, no rods. We are all about wheel slots. So, here we are, ready to run. We are homing. We are homing and uh, we're gonna set uh, E0 probing with the BL touch. And I'm gonna lay. I'm, I forgot one. I forgot to take off the, the purge line. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen now. Looks like it might have been okay. I mean, going 40 at the first layer is pretty quick, so uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but let's see. I'm then going to try to run the other... The other window for uh, the feed. But I'm not, I'm not able to log in at the moment. It's very strange, really.
Just give me a minute, guys. Yeah, here we go. You gotta get a better view in... Uh, my web camera is not, uh, not the best, so... But I think this gives better images. So Shane, welcome. Yeah, I have I have 75 degrees at the first layer only because I don't use any adhesion. I print straight onto the bed. This is aluminum covered with paint. It's like hot paint. So I want some higher temp on the first layer just to get it the first layer to stick good. Uh, and then I go down to 65 at the second layer. So that's why, you know, if you see the, my bed, you can see that there's no glue, no nothing. There's no glass, not, no, no nothing. Yeah, yeah, Darius. I'm sorry, I missed some of your messages. <laughs> you can ask them again, you know. Um, <laughs> you have many aluminum rods, yeah. The, yeah, by all means. Hey, they work fine on the smaller ranges printers, but the thing is that vertically mounted uh, rods, when uh, you start reaching, let's say, 400 millimeter and above, they will start to sag, you know. They're not meant to be horizontal. So they work fine vertically, you can use them no, no problem. They can flex that way as well, but they will actually, uh, by their own weight, their own weight, they will uh, make a little bit of, uh, by the gravity, just a little bit sagging in the middle. So that's why you want some V slots or some linear guides, but uh, for, yeah. I mean the the hypercube works fine with rods. Uh, just don't stretch the build volume too much. If you stay beyond, uh, let's say 300, then you're fine. If you go 400, I'm, I'm uh, I don't know. Um, so the part is printing. Um, so Shane, did you get? Uh, did you get my uh, feedback on, on the bed temp? I mean, every machine is different, so you can't say that uh, 75, you should, you should use 75 on yours, but also I measure the temperature at the bottom of the build plate, and because that's where the heater is. And you know, it might be cold, colder on uh, up top actually. Uh, so 75 by reading 75, we might actually have let's say 65 at the, or maybe 70 at the top surface. So this is it. I'm, I'm, I don't have much more to say now. I can talk a little about the plans, as I said. Um, the plans is to like finish this uh, printer really really quickly uh, just gonna be the cheapest testing machine and let's see where it brings me it might even be something uh, turns out good maybe I can release it to more people yeah uh, long Y we slots short X rods yeah Sure, you'll be fine, Darius. Um, just uh, have the things in mind. Don't don't complicate stuff. Uh, the easiest is often the best. Usually, I tend to complicate things and go back to stuff that's more uh, like simple because that's what works. Like ninety nine percent of the time, times, you know, why reinvent the wheel and so on. But um, I had some uh, parts on the weekend before, which was more complex, I think, but didn't work as well. And now it's more simplified, but it's more rigid. It's more, uh, yeah, it's better. Uh, so the only only thing missing now, I think, on the weekend, after I uh, did the the modification to the to the fan uh, shroud 
as you see now, I run a 4010 fan there, not the not the the rubbish V630 fan. It's turbo, so we have a nice fan there. But it would be nice to also have some sort of tool changing available for the weaking, at least manually, so we can have a modular module modular uh, X carrier which you can place uh, let's say a laser on and uh, stuff like that so that's also been uh, my plan but there's only so much i can cover at one time so i have to make priority and the pro priority right now is to finish this guy so i can have a test machine and also i want to show you i need more cameras i want to show you the new board so this is actually the um, uh, my test rig <laughs> my previous test rig for the new 32-bit Marlin board so i'm gonna do a review on how to uh, implement Marlin 2.0 on this 32-bit board so we can uh, get that running also on the weekend but then i need uh, you know i need uh, i need motors i need uh, everything i want to test everything at just uh, before i mount it on to the mach my, the weekend i want to, to test it first and do the yeah, do the the YouTube on how to implement Marlin 2.0 and so. So that's up next also. Too many things, too little time. That's DUI heaven. <laughs> okay. Yeah, manual the tools changing. Yeah. yeah i'm really loving Mar marlin you know i really like marlin even i run duet duet now with the rep rep firmware um i'm sure duet is very good when you know all kinds of stuff but i'm not a firmware person i'm a, just a mechanical designer although i know a little bit about firmware but um it's like uh, Marlin, it's more like you set it and forget it, but um, uh, the duet with the rep rep firmware is always updating and it's always um, something to tune. You tune your... You never stop tuning. I, I feel like I tune all the time. Uh, now I've been running for a while without any tuning, because, but it was also very difficult to tune pressure advance on on a machine with a Bowden as long as uh, the the Weeking Core XY, which has like now I'm at 750 millimeter Bowden tube, which was no problem with Marlin 1.1.9 and Marlin whatever uh, on the 8-bit board. There was no issues whatsoever. And then I install uh, the Duet, which is like the cost as much as a printer with the rep wrap firmware and have terrible res results terrible prints um the retraction was not working as you know uh, proposed and i was trying with pressure advance without pressure advance nothing was working for me and then i figured out i had a wrong, wrong thermistor so the temperature was way off because the duet is more sensitive to stuff because it's high and you know high and uh, bored so it's also very sensitive, uh, not as the ramps board, which are like, pretty rough, but they do the job, you know, so yeah. Um, I'm happy about the duet now, but it took me a while and a lot, I lost a lot of hairs uh, tuning that guy in. But now, as you see now, it's, it's fine. And we are almost done with the first layer, guys. I'm talking away here, uh, chatting away. Um, talking rubbish but uh, let's just see how uh, how the second layer will start and um, we can uh, have a look at the speed because the speed will it will speed up it's currently printing at 40 at the first layer 
just gonna fill in these spots around the text so yeah Shane so anything else you wonder about what what did I not cover um, the Weeking XT as I've been also talking about a little bit which is gonna be a more advanced a high budget printer probably around 2000 maybe I don't know but um, that's very far away I don't know what I'm gonna finish this now and then we we'll see if I can start on that or if I would just go uh, with uh, designing the the modular uh, tool changing uh, stuff for the weekend which is pretty much overdue so that would be a smart way mm -hmm. thing to do so yeah let me know what you want me to prioritize I know I know that not all of you have a weekend but you're probably interested in uh, printer design and the printer stuff 3d printing and DUI stuff in general and also if you want me to do other projects you know I can do DUI projects so let me know um, if you want me to do reverse engineering stuff that's my specialty so bring me some pictures of something you want designed and I can uh, tape it and release it and you can see how it turns out so uh, yeah now we are moving to the second layer and I'm gonna leave it with that I think so um, I'm just gonna stay here for a little bit longer and um, probably gonna leave the feed on and come back in between and see if there are questions you want to be answered try to bring the live feed over to the other monitor Just leave me a comment guys if you more if you have any questions. I'm just gonna bring the let me see. Yeah. So here we go. So you can see the printer. I'm just gonna need to bring my stuff, other stuff, like this. live streaming is not my, my forte it's not uh, something i do every day so that's why everything is a little bit um up in the air so i miss ones <laughs> just made it guys Now, there you go. 
I think you have it. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, so what's in the chat, guys? Um, cool. Yeah, think of something, uh, Darius, and let me know if you want anything reverse engineered. And I need some pictures, and then we can do it in a fusion. I can type it. So thanks for watching, and I'll just leave this on. And if anyone comes by and uh, asks something in the chat, I will answer. Okay, see you guys.